Hydrogen is the ideal fuel for airplanes. This is a concept plane, which means it's a drawing, and it's got some high-efficiency prop blades and things like that. Years ago, when we established the International Academy of Science, in fact, to be exact, it was in 1985, and I had run my, my very first big public company for 13 years. I had just sold it in 1984, and now I wanted to get involved in education. And so we created the International Academy of Science, which would be a university and a worldwide science organization to develop engineering. We didn't know what we were going to call it yet but we knew that it was going to be applied science and the science of putting science to work was the way we would say it. I met uh, four amazing scientists that joined with me to establish this organization. And today I want to focus on two of them. One of them was a gentleman named Dr. Willis Hawkins, who was the president of Lockheed, California. He was over the skunk works. He was the guy that before that was responsible for the Abrams tank. He'd done a lot of, a lot of very successful things. And Mr. Hawkins uh, really liked the idea, which I had brought to him, of converting airplanes to run on hydrogen. Now, in this figure, you can see the air coming over the wing of an airplane and you'll notice that it's all turbulent. Turbulent air going over a wing causes drag. If there was a way you could make the air go over smooth in a form that engineers call laminar flow with other weight advantages of hydrogen, you'd be able to have a plane go twice as far on the same amount of fuel. Well, a, a guy at NASA, at NASA Lewis, uh, Dr. Robert Witkowski, came up with an idea of using the very cold temperature of liquid hydrogen to make cold places on the leading edge of the wing of an airplane, which would cause laminar flow and would make the airplane fly twice as far. Here's a drawing kind of showing conceptually what I'm talking about. Can you see the coil? So what you do is as the fuel, the liquid hydrogen, which is 400 degrees below zero, as it leaves the fuel tank, it goes along the leading edge and cools it so you get laminar flow, and then it's burned in the engine after it vaporizes. So this would be a really, really amazing thing. And Willis Hawkins became one of the founders and directors of the International Academy of Science, and we set out on a project to build an airplane just like this. If you could make an airplane go twice as far, partly because of the laminar flow, partly because hydrogen only weighs one-third as much as jet fuel, it would change aviation. And by the way, it's getting ready to happen right now. Willis uh, had been very successful in his career, and so he got a team at Lockheed, and they started putting together all of the engineering and the science to build this kind of an airplane. And this was a, an artist's rendering of what a hydrogen plane would look like. Here is a picture of Dr. Hawkins, you can see on the left. And one of the airplanes they were building at the Skunk Works, which was the Blackbird, or the SR-71. It's a little bit hard to see in this low-resolution picture, but inside the Skunk Works where they were building the Blackbird, they wouldn't let me take pictures. But Willis arranged for me to go through there to look at the SR-71 because that's the plane we chose to convert to hydrogen. And they had an assembly line so I could see the planes with the wings still open to figure out how to put the heat exchanger on. And uh, there was a, a research plane that we were gonna equip which would be the world's first hydrogen plane. We had to make sure that the engines, the jet turbines, would work well on hydrogen, and so we partnered with a company called Pratt Whitney. Oh, say so Pratt Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> Pratt Whitney is a, a very 
uh, well-established manufacturer of jet engines, and they actually set up a, a test laboratory, and they tested the engine and got it certified for flight on hydrogen. It turns out jet turbines run very well on hydrogen, so that was good. Unfortunately, right when we were getting close to, to taking this thing off, um, my dear, dear friend and fellow director passed away. And that kind of brought the project a little bit to a halt. Now, to really fill in the whole story, though, this, this gets to be an interesting story as you dig into it. At our very first board meeting, mm. when the five of us got together, uh, one, of, one of us didn't survive, but the four that officially became the directors, and we, we had another guy named Olaf Textrum who ended up not being a director, mm. but he was there. And we had this big meeting to create this wonderful International Academy of Science in 1985. And Willis Hawkins was at one end of the table. I was in the middle, and at the other end of the table was another friend of mine who I invited to come and be one of our founders, one of our board members. And his name is Dr. Nikolai Tupolov. He was the head of the Tupolov Design Bureau in the Soviet Union. And he had met me at a hydrogen conference, and we'd become friends. And so he flew over to the States to help us get this thing going. Now, he made the supersonic transport that they uh, did in Russia, a lot of airlines, a lot of planes. His father was the guy that started the Tupolev Design Bureau and famous aerospace guy. But Nikolai was a very, very good friend. At the first meeting, though, um, sparks flew. It <laughs> turns out that Willis Hawkins is the guy that built the spy planes that flew over the Soviet Union, and Tupolev was the guy that was supposed to prevent them from flying over, and they got in quite a discussion, and in 10 minutes they became the best friends in the world. Did you know that they, they were those positions when you brought them on? The well, I kind of knew they were, but I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> and I knew, mm -hmm. I knew what they had done. Yeah. But I'd like to show you something really interesting because in 1985 at that meeting, here was Willis Hawkins, and we talked an awful lot. So my idea is coming through. Here you it's go. just coming through. It's coming through. We talked an awful lot about how we were going to build this hydrogen airplane, and we got pretty excited. Well, Dr. Tupolev went back to the Soviet Union, and he started working on his version. And this is a mock-up of a TY-155 Russian airliner. And I'm going to see if you can see this big blue tank here. This was a big tank that they built into the airplane to store liquid hydrogen. And so he said, we're going to build one for the International Academy of Science in Moscow. Well, when it turned out that the project got stalled in California, the one in the Soviet Union went right ahead. This is a photograph of Dr. Alexei Tupolev, and this is the first airplane in the world to fly on hydrogen. And um, I have to tell you the whole story. It, it flew in 1988, and this engine right here, one of three engines on the airplane, this one was the one he converted to fly on hydrogen. And this one and the one on the other side ran on jet fuel so that they had safety backup. But it, it worked very, very, very well. And of course, we're going to see airplanes run on hydrogen very, very soon all over the world. Mm -hmm.